put in Kuntur, sir. Thank you very much. N.K. Premchandran ji. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson, for affording me this opportunity to speak on the demands for grants for the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Sir, I would like to quote the recommendations of the Standing Committee on the demands for grants. They have given very vital, important recommendations has already been given by the Standing Committee. And highlighting regarding the China plus one strategy for making India an alternative investment destination for major global companies that intend to substitute their China-dependent supply chains. So this has to be taken very serious note of it because the present global situation, the geopolitical situation yesterday, Joe Biden, the President of United States of America has warned China even for having direct alliance with, alliance with Russia and also the ASEAN countries for the last 20 years they are planning to have the alternate destination. But this is the best time by which if India is able to rise up to the occasion, definitely we can be one of the global leaders in the industry, in, especially in the trade and industry, and for which India should have a proactive policy so as to make utilize the political situation, especially the current geopolitical situation. That is the first point which I would like to make. And second one is regarding the situations which is prevailing in our country, regarding the situation that is the ease of doing business. And it is the government is always claiming that we are having the ease of doing business is that the ranking has come down from 86 to 35 or 36. And a good atmosphere is also there. And also world-class manufacturing infrastructure is also there for having the investments in the country. That is the second claim which the government is making. And another one just now, Gogoi has, uh, Gauro Gogoi has already stated that when UPA government was going for the free trade agreement, Big criticism was coming from the part of the BJP, and I still remember even from the late Arun Jaitley, the late uh, Leonard member, who also has opposed the free trade agreement. Now, even the government is also now proposing the free trade agreement. I would like to call the Standing Committee report that free or preferential trade agreements were an interim and mini trade agreement with countries that seek to invest in India under the China plus one strategy. That is, unquote, that is also concentrating on China plus one strategy. So that means we have to be very careful in entering into free trade agreements in which we have to safeguard, protect the interest of the domestic farmers and the domestic industry has to be protected. That is why the ASEAN agreement, when so many agreements have come, big opposition has come because the domestic industry, the domestic farming community has not been taken into consideration in entering into free trade agreement with the foreign countries. Here the recommendation is absolutely welcome but only subject to the condition that the interest of Indian industry as well as the farming community has to be taken care or that, that has to be taken into confidence. These are the suggestions which I would like to quote from the standing committee on uh, uh, department of department related standing committee on commerce and industry in rest of, in respect of the demands for grants for the financial year 22 23 sir the committee has uh, come to the conclusion that the amount which has been allocated to the ministry has been utilized in an optimum way that has already been utilized there is no fault on the part of the ministry in spending the money but unfortunately the budget allocation for 22 23 is very less when compared to that of the revised estimate of 21 22 and the budget estimate of 21 22 that is why i when i was in the chair i was talking that revised estimate is also one of the important ingredient part in deciding the performance of the ministry the revised estimate is the actual something in a way actual expenditure which is coming from the part of the ministry so if we have to compare with the revised estimate with the budget estimate of the coming financial year so that has to be done if that be the case the allocation for 22 23 for the department of this industrial promotion and internal trade and as well as the department of or the ministry of commerce is very less when compared to the revised estimate of 21 22 so further allocation has to be there that is the recommendation of the standing committee i fully support the recommendation of the standing committee sir coming to the critical and the controversy 
fundamental issues which we have to look into to have a critical analysis of the industrial or the investment climate which is prevailing in our country. So ease of doing business and bust infrastructure, these are the two conditions by which foreign direct investment may come to our country or more investment may, will be attracted. See, the government is always claiming that we have gone up to the, the, the number, it has come down and the performance is well and we have done a wonderful thing when compared to the UPA government and NDA government. So what is its impact? It should, it should reflect in the result. Suppose if we are having a climate friendly environment, investment friendly environment in our country and if we are having good infrastructure facilities for starting industries, definitely it should reflect it should reflect in the foreign direct investment. It should it reflect in the investment of the country. What is the foreign direct investment in India? See, in 2014-15, that is uh, uh, seven years back, US dollars 45.15 billion was the FDI, and now it has come just to 81.97 billion US dollars after these seven years, after all these reforms. So if we had such a reforms of coming ease of doing business and in the other, other sectors, the FDA would have been much better than that of this. So the claim of the government as rightly Karthi Chidambaram has just now stated and Gogoi has also repeated that most of the claims are not based on ground reality and not based on the real facts. Instead of that, big claims are being made by the government so as to create an atmosphere through the PR exercise and doing and the Honorable Prime Minister is also making a tweet today regarding the export. We are, on, we are not sure in respect of the terms. We will hear from the Minister what is the actual position of the export of our country. After that week, we, we, we would be able to come in on that issue also. And similarly, during the lockdown period and during the COVID-19 period in order to address and combat this COVID-19 pandemic, Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, Make in India has been announced by the Honorable Finance Minister. What is its real impact? We would like to know. 1.97 lakh crores of rupees, that is US dollars, 26 billion has been announced in the Union Budget 21-22 also. So the production-linked incentive is also given for 14 sectors. I fully agree with the production-linked incentive, but that is only applicable to the big houses. Supriya Suleji has indirectly said that big boys. I would directly, specifically, I would like to point only for the corporate, big corporate business houses. What about the MSMEs? What about the small scale industries? So this production linked incentive have to be made applicable to all. But the conditions are very stringent. You have to make 50% of the profit means it is, it, it is impossible. It is not able to, uh, practicable, it is not feasible. In such a situation then to whom it is applicable? To, it is applicable only to the big business houses and the corporates, big corporates, they will be entitled to get the production linked incentive. So that has to be reviewed. That scheme has to be reviewed. There also, if you see that uh, the result is not being reflected because unemployment situation in the country is, uh, the country is rocketing like anything, 8.5%. For the last 50 years of our independence, we are having Amrad Mahal, so independence key festival, we are, we are celebrating. What is the rate of unemployment? So if you are having the investment friendly atmosphere, investment, FDI, and all these things are there, definitely unemployment will, will also be addressed. So, so sir, that has to be reviewed and also seeking clarification. Then the last point which I would like to make, I would like to seek, I, I seek a clarification, not a specific answer from the Honorable Minister. What is the direct policy in respect of disinvestment? Because, sir, sir, mergers and acquisitions have been proved to be an effective tool for the purpose of corporate or industrial restructuring activities. Telecom industry is one of the most profitable and rapidly developing industries, and Indian telecommunication industry is the world's second largest telecommunication in India. It is relating to another department, but I would like to know the policy of the government as a whole. The recent merger of Vodafone India and Idea Cellular is an interesting example of the government's policy, policy contradiction. Now, NDA government was always alleging that there was a policy paralysis at the time of the UPA government. Now, there is a policy contradiction on the part of the NDA government. Why I am saying is that you are privatizing the profit-making public sector undertakings and you are nationalizing or you are investing in the loss-making private units. That is what has happened in VA. What of an idea if you examine, I'm not going to the details, 38.7% of the share is being held by the government of India. 
in a loss making company 160000 crores of rupees loss making private unit in which investment is being done by the government of india and the ppcl public sector undertakings like bpsl is being privatized what is that is what is called the contradiction policy contradiction is there i would sir sir, sir last point the policy contradiction has to be explained and the last last point is regarding my constituency sir regarding the cashew sector i have met honorable minister uh, anupriya patel ji had responded well i do appreciate also i met the cabinet minister sir cashew industry in kerala not only in kerala throughout the country is facing severe crisis 95% of the workers in cashew industry are women and that too backward scheduled caste scheduled tribe and weaker sections of the society we are seeking a revival package of the cashew industry when it is facing big crisis and 2.5% of the import of the raw cashew nuts is also there that has to be eliminated because so as to save the industries and i would like to have a meeting of the honorable finance minister and commerce minister with the representatives of the members of parliament so as to resolve this issue and i demand a cashew revival package a traditional industry has to be pro protected by which lakhs and lakhs of poor workers will be protected with these suggestions once again i express my sincere thanks i conclude thank you very much ji thank you thank you sir for allowing me to speak for allowing me to speak on